guys, this is Jorge from the Big Band Podcast. I'm here with my co-host, Adrian Pedrin. Thanks for joining us today. Today, The topic of today's episode is about the future of education. Um, so an interesting question is, you know, where we were thinking an interesting question is, what if in the future, in students, instead of choosing a major, they chose a mission for life? So <laughs> it's a little, you know, out of the box, but, you know, in terms of what we think of education, I think it's, um, well, number one, it's still very old. It hasn't changed in a, in a quite bit. And I think, and personally, I think the whole, the whole concept of people going to school to get a diploma in, 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 in a, um, you know, for the reason of getting a job is, is completely irrelevant. Um, I think that, you know, most people don't end up doing what they go to school to do <laughs> later on. Um, that's, that's also a fact that I don't think it gets a lot of attention gets talked about. So I think we need to rethink the way we, you know, we frame why people should go to school in the first place. What do you think? I concur. No, I mean, yeah, I, I, I to me, it sounds <clears throat> completely stupid that you would be like, okay, so what makes money right now? Why not think, okay what can I do or what can I learn to make humankind a better, make it better? Do I need to study some sort of biological engineering or be a doctor or work with computers or what can I be good at and make the world a better place instead of, oh, well, I'm going to make money on if I study that and I kind of like it. But at the end of it, if you don't have like the balls to follow through on everything, you, you won't even work in a related field. Yeah, I mean, it, and, and also, I mean, it, it, you know, most, most fields will not exist in the future. <laughs> um, so, you know, in, 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 in our case, you know, if, from, from a technological point of view, a lot of, a lot of these fields are going to be, I'm not going to say transferable to robots, <laughs> Is that going to take a more time? But some tasks will be delegated to, to computing, um, where people, instead of them actually doing the job, they will basically just become like a handler. Mm -hmm. um, so that's not really fun. I mean, you got to do it. I mean, if you get paid for it, I mean, for example, I mean, oh, I, I mean there's a bunch of companies, but let's just talk about Facebook. I mean, we, we all, we, you know, most of us carry the, the Facebook Messenger app on our phones, right? Yeah. Um, well, later on, I'm probably thinking next year, sometime next year, you know, Facebook is going to release this thing called uh, Facebook Messenger M, which is basically artificial intelligent powered Facebook Messenger, where we will be doing transactions or some kind of activity where we're asking for things. For example, well, I want to send my, my, in your case, your wife flowers, right? So you'll do it through Facebook Messenger. You'll say, hey, Facebook, I want to send flowers to my wife. Can you help me? Sure, Facebook's gonna answer, or, or Facebook is gonna answer. Yeah, sure. What do you want? And what? And, and then you'll do that transaction. That's what they're thinking. But what's really going on behind the scenes is, yes, there's an AI um, algorithm reading your your message, but then an actual human will do that thing for you. <laughs> so it's like your your virtual assistant. So basically, that's one of the ways that we are, or, or companies in the in the you know te technology is is. Are, are, are making computers learn. Um, so that's one thing that, you know, in the future, we're not going to have, <laughs> we're not going to have handlers. <laughs> you know, people are going to study, go to school Eventually. to study to become, to become a handler. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not going to, you know, so, I mean, we got to be thinking about these things because in the future, you know, we are at the point where we can create our own, um, I'm not going to say career, <laughs> But our own, our own destination, our own path, if you want to call it that. I mean, it's not, it's not an unknown or, or a strange idea to think that some people will be engineers, but they're also artists or they're also musicians or something like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, yeah. it, I mean, like for example, I mean, even, even, I mean, in my case, I mean, I remember when I went to school, I, yeah, I, I went through the engineering track, but um, I would jump from one class you know, from engineering class to a electrical engineering class, which was not my major, but just wanted to go over there to sit, sit in a class and listen to, to new stuff, right? Um, for various reasons. Number one, because I was motivated to learn. And another reason was I, because my track I thought was very slow. 
Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? It was it just it was just like that, right? And doesn't mean that I became an electrical engineer, but I have that knowledge enough in in, in my head to to be able to communicate with an electrical engineer and and see a you know a connection between the two things and you know something else would, would come out of, out of that. Um, but I think a lot of things and you know last week I was with a with a friend who's who's trying to hire some you know a marketing person for his company, right? And he's asking me for tips. He's like, what do you think about this? You know, this, he sent me someone's, um, you know, CV. So I'm looking at it and I'm like, well, what exactly do you want? <laughs> I mean, just, just don't just go by the CV. Oh, I like her because, I mean, she has a design background. And look, all the stuff that she's done. I'm oh, like, she's hot. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> she's hot. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm like, okay, so those are not, are not the right reasons. <laughs> I'm like, does she learn? I mean, is there something in her CV that tells you she's learning? Or is there something in your interview that t tells you she's an active learner? Because I said, most, most people down here in Mexico who come from marketing do not have a digital background. No. <laughs> and, and we're talking about people who are in their mid, not even their mid-20s, starting their 20s. And, and people in that age group, you know, they woke up with the internet. <laughs> yeah. And it's ridiculous. They don't know how to, nothing in a, from a business perspective, digital. I mean, they're just cramming, um, or or in universities down here, cramming old school knowledge but, into I mean, the brain. The one thing that goes like kind of towards them on on, on this discussion is that for me right now, me and a friend are trying to, a friend and I are trying to um, implement 50 second commercials for Instagram and for Facebook or Twitter or whatever for social media. Uh, why? Because it's cheaper. It's cheaper than TV, local TV here. Yeah. It's way cheaper than local TV here. And we're having a hard time. I mean, if, if you say, okay, so you're going to reach more people, the, the people you reach are going to be more, um, are the people you want to be reached. And it's going to be, what did, did I say? It's cheaper? Yeah. And it's going to be cheaper. So, and more effective. So why wouldn't you do it? I, I, I don't know. I, we thought we had like an, a brilliant idea and we're going to be millionaires in a few months. But people don't um, trust in it. Even though they're, look, they're, they're seeing the results in their face, they still like, they don't, I don't know, they don't trust it. They, they either don't do commercials or they, or they do them on local TV. So maybe that's uh, uh, where we're, we're Maybe we're lagging in that department because I, I don't know, but I, I do understand what you're saying, and but maybe it's the, the culture here in, in yeah. Tijuana specifically. I mean, culture has a lot to do with it. You know, you know there's, a, there's a, a, you know, we were talking about this previously in another podcast where we celebrate, you know, we were talking about celebrating crap, right, and mediocrity. Mm -hmm. Well, specialization leads to mediocrity. <laughs> Um, why? Because there's no, you know, there's no further, there's no leaps in progress. There's just increments in progress. That's mediocrity. Um, but, and, and that goes with the, what I was saying previously of, you know, most, most jobs or most things will become irrelevant at some point in the future. Yeah. I um, mean, that's, and that's, and people were not, were not, are not the ones who will make them irrelevant. That's just, that's just a technological leap that will do that. <laughs> that usually comes from, from somewhere else. Not from the person who's doing that actual thing. Okay, wait, wait. So, so I'm thinking, eventually, a computer is gonna learn what is the best marketing plan for a determined product. Let's say a new soda. So you're gonna input into a computer. Hey, I have a new soda. What's the best marketing plan? And the age? Uh, no, not even that. It's and well, yeah. I want to target age 28 to 35, just to say something. So the computer is going to be like, okay, well, throughout all the research I've done, blah, 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 this is your best marketing strategy implemented. But then there's going to be another computer who's going to be able to implement that, who's going to be able to design on its own a flyer. It could happen. Or, or a, a commercial gathered from stock footage around the web. And it's going to be like, oh, I, I just gathered all this stock footage and it's going to be $1,000 to buy all this stock footage. Blah, blah, blah. Do you want it? It's already edited. It's already good. So eventually, yeah, we're, 
we're all gonna be obsolete eventually all of us yeah we're still ways off but <laughs> even the handlers it might eventually. happen yeah it might happen i mean we we already know that computers can create music they can create art yeah I mean, you just got to teach them <laughs> exactly but you know but you know that's but that's people that's actual people inputting stuff to to a, to a system for pe for the computer to learn so at what point does the computer actually start learning without the help of a human but that's a completely different topic <laughs> right <laughs> but people i mean even i mean in in people i mean some people know this but they're not really thinking oh that's not going to happen to us we're way us off well why fucking wait right <laughs> yeah why don't we put people right now start thinking about that instead of saying oh wait until let's wait 20 years until the computer starts doing the marketing in the meantime you go pick up you know get that diploma and get a job <laughs> you're still going to become irrelevant eventually but you got 20 years to make up your fucking mind <laughs> which, or is, you which could, is i think what people what most schools try to do or you could be you could try and be but this is still going back to what we were talking about the other day you could try and be the inspiration that the computer eventually will yeah. draw upon. Because yeah. the, if the computer wants to make a marketing plan and you're uh, you're good at marketing, well, it's going to research the best marketers yeah. or marketeers in the world. So yeah. it's, you could still be part of it. I mean, there's. I mean, I think that um, you know, the, the circling back is the point is that you know we go. To, well, we don't go to school anymore, <laughs> but. <laughs> When we did, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I can't per personally say that most of the stuff that I was going to school for, I completely rejected. I used to have problems with, with, with professors all the time because I questioned their thing. I thought, this is like 10 years ago. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so I had to, you know, learn my own things. And I think that's what's really missing. The fact that, you know, I have a project called TriLab where, where it's basically, I, I call it failure school. Um, where you want people to go and fail. Because if you go to school, they don't teach you to fail. I mean, the whole thing about the grade point average and all that thing, that's, that tells you that you're not supposed to fail. <laughs> that's, that tells you that if I go to a job and I say, oh, I had a grade point average of, I don't know, four, four and a half, whatever. Oh my God, this guy's a freaking genius. That doesn't tell you anything. That, that doesn't mean genius. That just probably means that he just follows the system. <laughs> Or he or she, or has which, a great memory. Or that, or or, or know somebody. Yeah, <laughs> right. I mean, we all know this. We all know this. I mean, the the skills that really matter are the ones who, about critical thinking, about creating stuff, working with people, collaboration, knowing how to lead. I mean, those things will never go out of out of, out of you know out of style. They're always going to be relevant. Even in a revolution, you even a revolution, them. you're always going to need them. Why? Because, I mean, at the end of the day, everything's done by humans. <laughs> yeah. Everything's planned. Everything's done. All, all, all our productive, you know, all productive um, focus goes into, you know, how do we deal with everybody else? I mean, that's how, it, that's how it goes. And I don't think, you know, at school, we really teach people how to do this. We gave them the theory <laughs> of how it's supposed to work. <laughs> really, how it's supposed to work. Oh, oh be, because we live in the industrial revolution, we're supposed to manage people. So, if you're not doing your job, I'm going to fire you. <laughs> that, I mean, that's, that's how it is, right? <laughs> that, that's, still, that's still pretty much how it works in most companies. But, you know, the, 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 the funny thing is that most, most forward-thinking companies do not even work that way. I mean, there's this example of a guy. I think it's, he's the CTO of Starbucks. Mm -hmm. That guy, I think he's, he's our age. He's probably like in mid-30s or something. That guy got the CTO job simply because he's a Warcraft guild guild general or something like that. I'm not really sure what the terminology is, but he's a guild leader or something like that. So the guys at Starbucks said, you know, this guy has the leadership qualities to lead a team because he played Warcraft, right? Now you're more of a, those types of games than I am. I, I went to Warcraft sometime, but I never got to be a guild leader. <laughs> Took too much time. <laughs> But I understand the concept of Starbucks saying, you know, this guy. You have no idea how hard it is <laughs> there to you go. manage a guild. I mean, I never, I did start a guild because it, it's cheap. But one thing is to start one, build it, and do endgame. Endgame was 40, plus, 40 players uh, raids. So you have, how many? Five, 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 eight, five 
uh, player teams. And in each one, there's a there's tank healer and three DPSs, which varying um, <laughs> style of DPS. One is magical. One is a uh, like hand to hand combat, and they all affect different bosses in different ways. So you, as a guild leader or raid leader, you need to know how everything works, how that guy works, how that guy works with that guy, and if you need to rearrange the teams, and you need to beat a very, very, very difficult boss with communication and teamwork. And mm -hmm. you, the only times I went to a, a raid, I think it was a 20-man raid, and it was like an hour and a half before we actually started the raid to get everyone to get there, to be there, to check if everyone had all the potions they, they needed to have, if everyone... I mean, it was... <laughs> that's when I said, I just want to play and have fun. I don't want to be a fucking manager in this game. I don't want to manage people. I don't want to deal with them. I don't want to... Some are just, like, grumpy, and they, they always... They love drama, and that was just fucking boring as hell. That Oh, this guy said this. Oh, maybe we should kick him. But if we kick him out... Maybe those other guys, those other guys are gonna live with him, and we need them for the raid. Blah blah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that the point is that you know. Wait, wait. The, so, so he wrote that on his on his CV, or or how did they know? Yeah, obviously, <laughs> obviously. But see, has that, that's the point. I mean, a, a forward-thinking company like Starbucks or any other company will look far and wide beyond your CV. I mean. <laughs> What other skills do you have and how do you put them in play, right? I mean, if gaming is your passion, then you're probably going to be doing something interesting doing your passion, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Are you going to do, be doing something that you don't normally say in the, you know, checklist world of, uh, you know, traditional types of jobs, <laughs> right? Yeah, you're going to be I'm like... just going to fit in this box right here and I'm just going to tell you what you need to know. But, to get the job. But in, in truthfully, I go over here and, you know, I'm a maniac over here, right? I mean, I got all these other skills that you're not, you don't know about. <laughs> you could potentially use, but since I know you're a square peg company, you're not going to put them to use. But a, a lot of people, if you tell a lot of people that you're a gamer, a lot of people are going to be like, oh, no, he's going to uh, be a slacker. He's, he's a slacker. Yeah, that's ridiculous. He's going to be here on time. He's not going to... It's ridiculous. I, mean, I think it varies on the type of game. Yeah. Like in World of Warcraft, but... And the type of player you are. But yeah, there's a lot of like racial, racial things going on for gamers too. Yeah, and and well, that's just the an ignorance part from from people not not digging deep. But you know, another thing is that you know, as we as we you know start interacting more beyond the Facebooks and all these things, most of the work that we were doing is is collaborative. I already work that way. I mean, I work with people around the world, and I've never met them. <laughs> Only through a window in Google Hangouts or Skype. I mean, that's it. Same here. But we do our shit, right? That's how we work. You know, most people do not do not understand that that's how <laughs> a lot of stuff gets I mean, done. Why would you want to work with someone local if right now you can work with anyone in the world? The only reason I would why? work with something lo someone local is for conveniences. But... I mean that would be I would I would limit it to certain things. It's, it's I know I can even, get. It's not even that because, I mean, you know how people are in Tijuana, and you can try and find diamonds in the rough in Tijuana. Yeah. Or you can see what's out there in the world. I mean, I, I by accident I met the guy who composed the main theme for for my film, and he ended up being in Amsterdam. In Amsterdam, yeah. And I was like, well, this guy makes awesome music. Why don't I ask him, hey, yeah. do you want to make a, a, a song for my film? I haven't even met, even met the guy personally, not even talked on the phone, just only email. And and um, we built a friendship all because in SoundCloud it said that he was in San Diego, California. And I was like, this is, this is such a good, this very good music from a guy who's in San Diego, who's local. But yeah. when I dig deeper, he was like, oh, no, I'm in Amsterdam. I was like, wait, that, that's even great that's greater that's great that's even better and he ended up making the the main theme and we're still friends he the other day he texted me through twitter hey i'm about to release some some new songs but i'm gonna send them your way first to see if you like any of them um before they they're, they're released to the public or they get signed or whatever and, and that made me feel special in a weird way <laughs> like yeah but i mean yeah 
there, there, you can collaborate with the whole world, find people who are good at stuff that you didn't even don't even know that you can yeah. use towards your business or your project or whatever. Yeah, and and that's really the you know a feature of work concept you know that you know the the, the wide that wide open collaboration, and um, you know that's not even a, a topic within schools. I'm, I'm pretty much I'm pretty certain <laughs> because you don't really see it, right? People. I mean, I sarcastically tell students sometimes when I go and go to speak to schools that, you know, beyond certain, you know, sending emojis to themselves through Facebook and Twitter, I mean, that's, that's, that's as much as we can expect from them. <laughs> okay, here's a thought. What if, well, not what if, so you got this guy who's a professor, right? He's teaching you. He's teaching you your major. But, I mean, how, how does that guy think? Is he like... Just because he's there as a teacher and that's his full time job. The, do you remember the, the film um, School of Rock? Yeah. They had a saying that those who can't do teach yeah. and those who yeah. can't teach teach PE. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it's, I think it's bad to think that way. And I know that there are some schools I, like the American Film Institute, which. Yeah. They do get like Steven Spielberg and all these great directors to go and give uh, talks, and and the professors are actually people who worked in the business and all that stuff. It's, it's a little bit different, but I, I don't think that I mean in Tijuana it's, it's just a job. I have a friend who's a, a professor at uh, one of the universities here, and the, he does see the world in a, in a like a square shape. A yeah, square he, shape. He, yeah, square he, way? yeah. He. he I mean, it's, you, got, you study, you get a job, you have a family, and, and, and that's it. I, I think the, <laughs> the concept of teachers is, is, you know, should be rethought. Um, yeah. I, think, I think they're more, more or less now required to be editors. Um, they are not the ones who, I mean, well, I, I, let, let, me, let, me, let me rethink this. <laughs> I'm going to say this. So I think if, if, if we were to, to go... From the question we started with, you, okay, you got a mission. Then you would be able to say, I want to choose my professors. <laughs> They don't get to choose me, right? Like, so you would look far and wide. Like in a great action movie. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's very simple. If I'm going to start a project right now and I got access to, you know, people on Twitter and all these other locations, I can scan their profiles and do all this stuff. So if I, I can, can scan people's profiles, I've got a good idea of, you know, who I can go to. So, I mean, that's, that's really the, the, I would take that to, uh, you know, to a school scenario and say, you know, what if, I, what if a student could choose their teachers, <laughs> right? And th not a teacher local, like you were saying. I mean, let's go far and wide. Let's go to, uh, you know, I want to learn about biology. All right, so let's go, what's the best school about biology? Who's the best professor about biology? Who's doing the most forward thinking stuff about biology? Let's go over there. Let, let's, let's look, like, sort of like, uh, Like Coursera and all these, you know, Udemy's are trying to do. Um, the, the bad thing about these these companies, and I don't know if you're familiar with them, but I've, I've taken like 16 or 20 classes already on Coursera. And um, one of the things that, that's happening is that these companies are becoming more like a, let's fill jobs with what people are learning, which is ridiculous. <laughs> um, you know, the fact that they're giving out certificates is, is insane because now it's like a validation that I took courses related to this online so you know give me a job so we're not really i mean you know what i mean we're not really doing anything <laughs> in terms of education we're just giving up more diplomas yeah but you know if you really use it as a learning tool you can go in there and say oh you know what uh, an upcoming project about uh, solar panels oh let's go into Coursera and let's see what's going on in there who's already that who's already doing something right bam you go in there you take class for for a month or something you're going to get a good a good idea of you know, kind of like what you're getting yourself into, right? <laughs> yeah. And that's, and that's really what it comes down to. I mean, I don't think, I mean, like I was saying, you know, if you go back to that question, you know, what if students, instead of choosing a major, would chose, chose, you know, choose a mission? Your mission gives you a direction. And from that direction, you start your strategy and you say, okay, so what do I need to go and pursue this mission? What do I need to learn? Who do I need to know? Who do I need to talk to? Who would I like to have on my team? You know, or, or in, my, in my case, not, well, yeah, actually, that's cool. Call it a team, not your professors, yeah. <laughs> right? Oh. Kind of like a mentor instead of a, instead of a professor. See, see, that's the, the other thing. Um, 
a lot of us, myself included, I don't like the term professor or teacher. <laughs> I think if you're a teacher, you would choose somebody to be your teacher because you are like, there's something there, right? I, 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 you know, I visualize it something like a, like, um, like a, ty like a hero type thing. Like if you were to go, go to school, you were to start a school right now, would you really think, oh, I'd like to go to school like I used, like I went before through the same professors? Probably not. I would say I would like to go to school with, with Einstein, <laughs> with Richard Feynman. Um, you know, let me let me ask Bill Gates who to, who to, who he went to school with. Can I recreate that that fucker? <laughs> and you know, make it my teacher. <laughs> you dropped out. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know, yeah, but so. <laughs> but there's something there, right? Yeah. I mean, there has to be something there that, that that give you, you know, something, you know, in terms of knowledge. So that's really what I'm thinking about, yeah. right? <laughs> I mean, how do you create your your all star roster of of personal teachers <laughs> to help you, you know, fulfill your mission? But I mean, if you're at that degree of hey, who can I get to be on my team? That that already tells me you're thinking differently. You're not. Uh, yeah, it's a, uh, we're, uh, well, I gotta go to university and learn. Yeah, but that's not. <laughs> no, that you're thinking. Oh, you're already thinking very differently from from everyone else. And I think if you think that way, I mean, for me, it's I do what you do, but on Linda.com. So if if I want to learn about something, I just uh, take uh, uh, what is it called in English? Moafinil. Which is like uh, what's that 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 drug for concentration Adderall, but yeah. it, but it's like Adderall without all the the Adderall side effects. So pop one and just twelve hours, see all the courses I can see, and and start doing new things. I mean, I just don't, I I don't want to wait for people to do stuff like collaborate that much because I've. First of all, I can't pay people right now, so I don't go that way. And there's a thing about me that I'd rather do it myself. I'd rather learn about it and do it or learn about it and then hire someone. Because eventually if I do hire someone, I want to know if they're telling the truth or yeah. not. If they're telling me. Because when we edited it, there was a thing we, we used to do that, that was um, they told me you need to learn how to, how to make them think that you're working. And I, I couldn't believe that a, a guy was, the, my supervisor was telling me that. <laughs> Why are you telling me that? That's not, no, that's that's not a, a productive thing to do. I don't care your reasons, it's not a productive thing to do. So, and we used to do that, there, I'm rendering, I'm rendering. We had things we could do to unrender everything and re-render it just because we didn't feel like working. So I want to know if people are doing that. So that's why I try and learn everything. And it, right now you can learn everything yourself. You really don't. Ju you just need to the patience, I think. Patience. Yeah. And you, like you said, in Linda, there's a lot of different professors or people who teach you stuff. And sometimes I'm like, nah, I don't want to learn from this guy. Let's see if, if another guy already did something similar or what other people. And some of them, uh, I learn very quickly. And some of them, I don't even make it through the course. It's like, this is boring. Yeah, no, and I mean, me, me neither. I mean, I finished the course in my time, not in the, you know, the specified time that Coursera has. But, um, yeah, I mean, you know, and, and, and by the way, I'm not, I'm not bashing professors. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, not, no. I'm not saying, we're, or we're not saying they suck. We're just saying the, w the way that their supposed job description should be rethought. <laughs> That's it. And, and, and by the way, it's already happening. I mean, I know there's a school, and I read this article about a month ago in Slate, where they're talking about a school where the professor is like an editor. So basically, everybody's learning while they are going. The professor just kind of sits on the back and just kind of engages as an editor, not as a guy who's, or, or she who sits at the front or, or stands at the front and it's dropping not, supposed knowledge into your head. You are, he becomes more like an orchestrator, less of a, oh, you got, now we're going to learn this <laughs> for the next two weeks, and then you're going to have an exam. <laughs> So people are going through, kind of like through a through their own course. And the professor just kind of engages when they have to, <laughs> right? That and so I think that's a that's a model where you're mixing you're mixing technology with the change in how the professor tries to engage in, in terms of your education. Personally, I think we need to go beyond that <laughs> because you know it's it's not about 
if it's, if we're still thinking about you know you are you were going to school to get a major, we are fucked up. <laughs> we are fucked up. I mean, frankly, <laughs> we are. I mean, it's, it's insane, right? Yeah. Because we don't teach people the, the the things that will actually you know what if I mean like I was saying in the beginning, what if this 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 career becomes irrelevant? <laughs> you know, for some reason. There's right? a there's a little right? yeah. It's, it's, I mean. What? <laughs> what are you going to do? Oh, shit. I don't know leadership. Um, I don't know how to talk to people. <laughs> I can't convince anyone because my, my degree convinced anybody. <laughs> I just sat down and took orders from somebody, and that's what I did. Right now, well, you're, you're, well, you're fucked up. <laughs> you're, you're telling, you're like supposedly telling me, I don't know how to convince people. I don't know how to convince people, but a funny thing happened after I finished the movie and I started talking about my finished movie because it's very important that it's finished. I didn't even have to... I didn't even have to know how to convince people. I was just talking passionately about what I do and people started offering me money to do another film. And I'm not asking money from them. I'm, I'm just talking about what I do because they're like, hey, so what do you do? And I'm, oh, and I start talking about the film, how I did it, how I practically did it on my own with just a little help. And there's a little comic, uh, like a 10 strip comic that I that I really liked that was, what would you do if money wasn't an object? Yeah. And the example they put there is a, it's a, a a woman who's like, well, I would work with animals. I would probably um, work with horses and ride horses every day and, and be a, a great horse rider and uh, have my farm with animals and all that stuff. And the professor goes and tells her, well, why don't you do it? Well, because I, I, I need money to survive. Well, you don't, you don't need it. In this scenario, you don't need it. And what would happen if you do it? Well, uh, you would... Be eventually become really good at it and people would look for you which is this goes back to, to what you were talking about that we look for our mentors we can look for our mentors people would actually look for you because you're good at it and everyone knows that you're good at it and they want they want you to teach them and I mean this could go either way with your way or the way that okay that you can start charging money for that yeah. but you're still doing what you're you're passionate about and you're good at it and it's helping everyone around you because you're good at something and you do it with a smile and you you just love your job and love your life and a lot of people don't do that right yeah now. so i think that's it, the, you know one of the key one of the key skills that people don't have or are not taught is how to convince people so being persuasive and that's also has to do with leadership that's not taught <laughs> I'm but i mean if if, if you're doing what you love. You don't even know how to come. You, you don't even need to know how to convince them. You're going to do it without you or them knowing that you're convincing them to do things. Yeah. Because I've had people that tell me, hey, you know, I, I want to work for you. I'm like, there's no money right now. That, don't don't worry about it. I just want to learn from you. Yeah. And well, like, I mean, if, <laughs> if you attract the right, the right people, if you attract the right people, yeah. I mean, it's, that's not even a question. You don't have to do the most convincing. You just got to just go for it, right? But yeah. um, and if if it's it's if it's if it does if it's it if most of the time it's not doesn't work that way, <laughs> I mean you gotta go through obstacles you gotta do all this all the crap, um, but um, but that question you mentioned about you know what if people didn't have to make a living what would they do, is is becoming even more of a of a topic now, um, for various reasons. But I mean I mean and, and seriously I mean you would eliminate the whole concept of work for for money, um, what would people do? <laughs> they have, to, I mean, they would have to have a, a an epiphany. <laughs> you know what's a, Two things. One, I find it very curious. We were talking before we started recording this. We were talking, and you told me that you officially went into computer science because you wanted to make video games. Yeah. And... I have always wanted to make video games, but I'm a film director. And the other day I was talking to a friend of mine who's a graphic designer. He loves to draw. That's why he went to graphic designing. He just lo loves to draw, and that's a picture he made. You guys can't see it, but maybe you can take a picture of it. Yeah. This is like a, a made with just a pencil. Mm -hmm. And he does this just that's for cool. fun. He loves it. He just loves it, but he knows that he can't... He can't um, 
survive with just selling just doing that, yeah. yeah, just doing that. But he also wants to make video games. So, sounds kind of like a joke, but does a film director, um, computer science major, and a graphic designer have in common? They all want to make video games. We're, we're, we're doing different things. In my... Um, my case, I'm just I'm doing films because that's like a video games and films are really, 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 really close to each other for me. I mean, I could do either one of them, maybe video games a little bit more, but I need I depend on people a lot more for video games. But that's probably what I would be doing, video games, and then I, I, I mean, it's the same thing because I'm creating stories in both of them. Yeah, and characters. Yeah. I mean, for me, for me, the motivation was, so, I mean, I, I think I haven't, I had an epiphany before most people do. So I, I couldn't, you know, when I was 18, I kind of understood what, why, why, or what I should be doing <laughs> in the, in the bigger picture, not the, you know, in terms of uh, career things. <laughs> but uh, my whole thing was, uh, you know, I'm, I'm here to, uh, to potentialize human, basically, <laughs> you know, so all my decisions were always based on that. <laughs> Am I gonna make this, you know, this person better? Um, why? Because if I make if help somebody become better, then I become better. I mean, that's how it was, and it still is. I mean, that's how I make most of my decisions. What what am I getting involved with? I mean, sure, I like to make video games and I, I like these things, but you know, what are how do you create something towards so people can become better? So that makes people better, right? So if you're thinking about video games, is that video game what is it? Is it gonna be inspire somebody to think differently? You know, in terms of the story. Is that gonna make somebody smarter? <laughs> you know, because you can design ga games to make people think. I mean, is, how is, how does it work, right? So, so for me, it was always based on that question, or that question is always the same thing. You know, I, I didn't go to school to to oh, I just want to computer science because I want to develop, you know, become a developer. <laughs> I want to make I want to make websites, right? I mean, <laughs> I mean, really, I mean, that's it. <laughs> there's there's so much more with all those skills, right? And that's really the point of it. I mean, what you know, choose a mission. And then, you know, kind of become like a mix of things and, and that will help you achieve that mission. Most missions will take all your lives. Some missions only take maybe a, maybe a, a decade or so <laughs> to achieve, right? And then the next mission. And then the next mission, exactly, right? So, I mean, that's, that's how it is. And, and a lot of people, I mean, if you ask them, even, even older, much older people than, than we or our parents, or, you, know, you ask them, you know, where are you, where are you here in this earth? They can't... Are you just a fucking parent or something? <laughs> Is that it? <laughs> That's it? So, I mean, I mean, most people can't tell you because they, they, they never thought about it. They're just going to work. <laughs> but they don't think they need to think about it. No. Or, so, I, I know a lot of people that are like, oh, well, I wanted to do this, but that, that's, yeah. a, that's a broken dream. I'm never going to be able to do it, blah, 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 blah. A lot of people like that. I'm like, like why are you and, thinking that way? And, and Yeah, and unfortunately, the broken dreams are because of the 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 you know your your own the beliefs of your you know what what you are a part of but if if you are you know in you know you go for your own belief then you know you don't care about the damn system around you <laughs> like we were saying you know the, the other podcast you would go and create your own system or your own scenario your own your own world where you can do that <laughs> as opposed to depend on everybody else right <laughs> Yeah. We're just, you know, the walking dead, basically. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so, I mean, that's, that's really it. I mean, the question about, you know, if you, could, if you don't have, didn't have to make a living, what would you be doing? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what, what would you be doing? What you would be doing, yeah. What would you, you choose to do? I mean, you would have to create your own thing because there is no career path. <laughs> right? Yeah. There is no career path. Do um, you got anything else? Nah, I'm good for now. <laughs> All right, okay, guys. Well, what do you think? I mean, do, do you, what do you, you do you guys think about you know the, the future of work, uh, the future of education? I mean, all these things are intersecting, um, and this episode was not kind of like touching upon everything, but most, most, most just trying to get to a question that really redirects everything towards a different future. So let us know what you think. Um, you know, give us some crazy ideas. And I'm sure we have more ideas up our sleeve for next episode. So thanks a lot. <laughs>